this video, we're going to look at the functions of the parts of the eye, as well as some abnormalities. Again, you're responsible for the structures, and that is in a different video, so make sure you watch that one first. Okay, let's start with this overview. Here you see the eye. Uh, the white part of the eye, remember, is called the sclera. And what the sclera is going to do, it's going to help hold the shape of the eye. Your eye does not change shape on a daily basis. It may change shape over time, over years, but the sclera is going to help hold its shape. It's going to help hold its shape. Another structure you need to know that's not on here that you can't see is the lacrimal apparatus. The lacrimal apparatus is the whole tear duct system. So it's where tears are going to be produced, distributed, and removed. If you remember that lacrimal bone on the inside of the eye socket, it, the tears are going to drain down there. So that you don't can't see anatomically, but you can, okay, but you can see it, or you need to know its function at least. Okay, then light, the goal here is to get light to land on the retina, which is going to contain the photoreceptors, specifically rods and cones that we'll talk about. Um, light's going to first travel through this outer structure called the cornea. The cornea is going to do two-thirds of the focusing of the light. It's going to travel through the cornea. Then it's going to travel through the pupil, which lets light into the eye. The size of the pupil is controlled by the iris, which you see here, which is smooth muscle. The iris also gives you the color of your eye, but its job is to control the size of that pupil. So we're going to move then through um, the pupil into the posterior area of the eye. And this red structure here is the retina. It contains the photoreceptors, which are going to respond or send action potentials from when photons hit the uh, receptors. Before we get to that, again, on this white, you can see the sclera, which holds the shape of the eye. You can also see the choroid layer. The choroid layer is a vascular layer, which is going to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the retina. Um, you also see the retina has a very large blood supply right here, so that choroid layer is the blue layer. The photoreceptors are located here. The two photoreceptors are cones and rods. Cones will be stimulated by a large number of photons, so you need a large amount of light in order to induce an action potential in a cone, and the cone will allow you to see color. There are red, green, and blue cones, and combination of these cones gives you the other colors that you can see. The other set of photoreceptors are the rods. For rods, you don't need a high level. They respond to a low level of photons, so in a dark area, so they allow you to see in low light, uh, you don't see color with them, but it does give you shadows and shapes of general structures. Now, when we look at a specific area of the retina, we look at this part in the back here called the macula lutea. The macula lutea is the whole area right here, the whole big circle, actually small circle, small circle. It contains a high concentration of cones, and within the macula lutea, we have the fovea centralis, which contains the highest number of cones. And even though you can't see the front of the eye, if you look down here, the light would come through straight back from that pupil back to this fovea centralis. So your best color vision, your best color vision is actually when you're looking straight at an object. This is the optic nerve. The optic nerve is going to send signals um, from these rods and cones through the optic nerve back to the brain where you will interpret, your brain will do the interpretation of what you're going to see. So those are the basic parts and functions of the eye. Um, those are the ones that you're responsible for in terms of functions. Now let's talk about some abnormalities of the eye. First, and I'm just going to go back to this picture, the goal is to get light to focus on the retina. If your eye is too long or too short, the light is not going to focus on the retina, and then you will either be nearsighted or farsighted, or we're going to use the more technical terms. Uh, myopia is when you can see near but not far. That means the light isn't focusing on the retina, and then glasses or contacts can correct that. Hyperopia is when you can see far but not near. Again, hyperopia is when you can see far but not near. Another type of abnormality is presbyopia. Presbyopia is due to the loss of close-up vision due to age. 
Um, let's look at this picture here, and you see the lens, and there's these ciliary muscles that will change the shape of the lens. And the lens is more stressed when something is close to you. So when you're reading something close to you, that lens is more stressed. And so as you get older, it doesn't, the lens doesn't work as well, doesn't focus as well. And so what happens as you get older, it's not about your eye changing shape. It's just about the lens becoming less flexible and you can't see things as close. And so that's why you see people with cheater glasses, including myself, who have to have these glasses to magnify things that are close to them. So that is usually a typical, okay, a typical thing that happens with age, usually mid-40s, early 50s. The other thing I want to talk about here, since we have the lens here, is cataracts. Cataracts are when you get a protein buildup in this lens. And so what happens to people with cataracts is they, especially at night when they see lights, the lights will flare out. So when they're driving and they see headlights, the headlights just take over their whole vision and they can't see very well anything else. Now cataracts can be cured by the replacement of a lens. So lenses can be replaced with cataracts. If you're ever around an old dog and you look at their eyes, they have, uh, they're foggy. That is what cataracts look like. Another abnormality that we can see here is talking about this anterior portion of the eye and within that anterior por portion you have okay you have a what's called aqueous humor aqueous humor is constantly made and it is recycled if that aqueous humor is not recycled because the the uh, recycling area the uh, tubes that recycle it are blocked then what happens is that aqueous humor can build up and so can pressure in the eye when you get a buildup of pressure in the eye, that can start to destroy the photoreceptors back in the retina. This type of vision loss is permanent. Um, there's nothing they can do about it. Once those photoreceptors die, then you're not going to get that vision back. That's why when you go to the eye doctor, they test, they send that little poof of eye, uh, poof of air, sorry, that poof of air into the eye, and they see how the eye rebounds. If there's too much pressure in the eye, it won't rebound as well, and they'll do further tests to get a more direct measurement of the, uh, of the pressure in the eye. And there's drops you can take, but again, if, if you go too long without knowing you have cataracts, it can cause permanent vision loss. Um, another abnormality we can talk about on this side is astigmatism. And astigmatism is when there's an abnormal curvature either in the cornea, which you see here, or in the lens. You can have an astigmatism in one eye and not the other eye. You can have it in both eyes, but they can differ. Um, it just depends. So that's an astigmatism, an abnormality in the curvature of the cornea and or the lens. So the last thing we want to talk about with the eye is your vision level. We talked about being nearsighted or farsighted, but when you talk about vision, we talk about having 20-20 vision. And what 20-20 vision is, is when you can see a 20 size letter from 20 feet. So you have 20-20 vision means you can see what a normal vision person can see at 20 feet. So 20-20, you can see at 20 feet what a normal vision person can see at 20 feet. And again, you've all seen an eye chart and there's a, there's a, there's a row of letters that are 20, they determined were 20 size letters, and you can read that row from 20 feet. If your vision is 2010, that is better, that is better than normal. You can see at 20 feet what a normal vision person can see at 10 feet. So these letters would be smaller, and if you go to the eye chart, um, you'll see either 2010 or 2015, the letters are smaller. So you can see at 20 feet what a normal vision person can see at 10. So that's actually better than normal. If you go in the other direction, 2040, 2040 is when you can see at 20 feet what a normal vision person can see at 40. So the vision here, 2040 or anything above 2020 for that bottom number is, is not as good as normal. If you go to the eye chart, you'll see that the 2040 row is the, the letters are bigger. They're actually twice the size of the 20 size letters for 2020. So 2040, 2060, um, technically legal blindness is 2200, which is the top letter on the scale, and that is the letter E. Um, if you cannot read that without glasses or, or contacts, then you are technically legally blind. 
So those are the abnormalities that you're responsible for with the eye. Um, if you have any questions about this after listening to this video, please do ask us. And you'll be tested on this on the test as well as the practice tests.